So I've been sent another pair of free budget earphones and, and I really enjoy testing these because it's, it's great to see how, how good they can be at these unbelievably low prices compared to what else is on the market. So these are even cheaper than the Comfort Bud Pros, which was the last review I did. So I was kind of interested to see how they compared. And these are particularly interesting because they've got a very unique feature set. So as a result, it positions itself in quite a strange place in the market. And that actually left me feeling a little bit confused by it. So let's do a quick feature rundown. So I'm going to mention the notable features and the notable exceptions as well. So they're true wireless earbuds with each one physically disconnected from the other. And they've got huge battery life both with and without the case. They use Bluetooth 5.2, more on that in a second. They use the Aptex codec, again more on that in a second. So they've got a noise filter on the microphones when you're using them for calling and I'm going to test that in a second as well. They've each got a physical button instead of a touch sensitive surface. They're very small, they're waterproof and sweatproof, they're light and comfortable. So these are the inner ear type headphones too and they don't have active noise cancellation. They don't have ear detection either so if you take them out they will keep playing. Although of course you can actually just press the button as you take them out which makes it pretty easy to achieve that. So the feedback they give you like when it connects or disconnects is actually read out using an American voice, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, you know, I don't know why they don't just come up with a set of tones or noises like the Comfort Buds do. Uh, I think that's a much more pleasurable experience than, than hearing a voice command, especially with a low battery warning, which we'll get to in a second. So these use Bluetooth 5.2, which is very much a big deal for true wireless headphones as it lets the device connect directly to each one, as well as including a low power usage and other clever stuff to improve range and connection stability. The issue is this technology is so new that not many devices on the market support it yet. So as of August 2021, no current iPhone supports it. So that rules me out as well with my 2020 iPhone SE. So this on the one hand is really amazing as it means they're very future-proof and use the best tech available. But on the other hand, it means if you buy them, there's a strong chance you won't be able to use them to their full potential. And this is actually the same deal with the Aptex codec support. My iPhone doesn't support that either. So with this, I'm not sure if it's that important. I'm not sure if I would notice the difference between the codecs, uh, but with the Bluetooth 5.2, I'm pretty sure the differences in performance would be noticeable. So basically when you're evaluating if these are gonna represent good value for you, you have to consider if you can make the most out of Bluetooth 5.2 or not. One thing to consider is what the battery life is like if you're not running 5.2. So I tested this with my iPhone, which uses Bluetooth 5, and I got nine and a half hours before I started hearing the low battery warning, which again is the voice saying low battery every five minutes for the last half an hour. Uh, so it, that's pretty annoying. Uh, but they finally died at 10 hours and 13 minutes. So that's a good bit short of the 12 claimed hours. It's still very good though compared to others on the market and the charge case can apparently recharge them four more times. So with the case and the built-in batteries, you are getting an unbelievable runtime here. I did a quick lag test compared to the Comfort Buds and somehow the lag is slightly better on the C1s even though they're both using Bluetooth 5 with my phone. So it's worth noting though that most operating systems deal with Bluetooth lag when watching videos. So this is really only an issue with things like games. So in terms of the sound quality, I think the, the problem here is the bass is, is kind of too artificially boosted for the characteristics of the speakers in there. So you get this boominess, which kind of sounds like the speakers are struggling. Uh, it's not like they're really good at the bass and they're boosting it, which is possibly slightly what the Comfort Buds do, uh, where the bass is pleasing enough to, to be slightly boosted. So with these, I don't think the quality of the bass is actually good enough to have them boosted to this level. So they lack that kind of effortlessness and airiness that better sounding headphones have, like the Comfort Buds. Also, the treble does seem slightly inconsistent as well in terms of frequency response. If you listen to a frequency curve uh, going up uh, to the point where you can't hear them anymore, there is some, some unevenness in the, the volume there as well. So um, the Comfort Buds have got a much smoother roll off towards the top of the range. And the low end extension isn't as good as the Comfort Buds either. If you hear a frequency sweep going down uh, into the sub bass range, you hear these tail off before you do with the Comfort Buds. And in terms of that kind of ability for instruments to sound natural and musical, I think it's lacking there as well. It sounds more like you're listening to headphones rather than to actual instruments. So the Comfort Buds are a bit better on that front as well. So on some tracks, this profile works quite well and you can enjoy the music. But of course, with others, it doesn't. And that's kind of what you'd expect with something that does color the sound uh, quite so much as these do. So there is actually also a very quiet background hiss as well. So if you're listening to them at nighttime on, on very low levels, you can hear this background hiss, which is a little bit annoying. You can live with it, but it's a bit annoying. One of the features they mention in their marketing is the CVC, which is clear voice capture based on four mics. And this is a feature that's provided by the chip as far as I could see, and the Comfort Buds don't have it. So let's do a quick comparison. 
All right, so I'm recording the sound from these now straight onto my phone. Uh, so this is using the CBC technology, which obviously will try and re remove the background noise. So this is me talking at normal level with no background noise in this room, it's a quiet room. What I'm gonna do now is turn the fan on, uh, which is quite loud on full volume. Now the fan's pointing away from me at the moment, so we're not hearing the impact of the wind on the microphone. All we're hearing is the impact of the background sound itself. If you do talk a little bit louder like this, then it starts to work a bit better and it can distinguish your voice from the background and it does quite a good job of removing the background sound and letting your voice come through. So what I'm going to do now is twist the fan around so the airflow is actually hitting the microphones on these and we're going to see what impact that has. So I'm now in the air, so we've got actual uh, wind simulation hitting the microphone, which is obviously a really challenging situation for the uh, weird buttons like this. All right, so I'm going to do the same test now, recording audio from the microphones on the comfort buds straight onto my phone uh, in a quiet room, no background noise. So what I'm going to do now is turn on the fan with it pointing away from me. So we're not having the impact of the wind on the on the microphones themselves, just the background noise. All right, so that's running at full tilt now. It's quite loud in here. So I'm just carrying on talking at normal level to see how it handles that. And then if I talk a little bit louder again, we can see if it, it does a better job of distinguishing the background noise and letting my voice come through. Uh, so that's quite a, a good test for that. So now I'm going to switch the fan to actually the airflow hitting me. And we can see the impact of, of that. So the air is now hitting me. I'm just using a normal voice at the moment to see how it deals with that. But if I talk a bit louder, hopefully it will do a better job of letting that come through in a windy situation uh, with some background noise. So let's look a little bit more at the button controls because I think they've actually designed a really good user experience here. So you've got two buttons, one on the left and one on the right. And between those two buttons, it's possible to pretty much control everything. You can play and pause with a single click on either side. And when playing, you can hold down left or right for volume down and up. Double clicking on the left or the right will skip tracks previous or next. Hold down the button for two seconds, you can turn them on. Six seconds will turn them off. Uh, you can answer a call with a click on either side or a double click to reject it. Triple click gives you Siri or your voice control on your phone. And this is actually all really good. It's good to have the physical feedback from the click. Uh, and all these commands are pretty easy to remember. The Comfort Buds make you choose which functionality you want to expose to the different kinds of control mechanisms. But with the C ones, you can actually kind of have it all. So all in all, this is a good set of earphones that you can enjoy music and films on. The main differentiator here though is the battery life. Even for Bluetooth phones only running version 5, but if your phone supports 5.2 then you should expect an even better experience. And the simple physical buttons allow full control with tactile feedback and the sweat proof and lightweight and good fit make this a good package for a specific set of requirements. For many though I think the price is still a fraction high given the lack of active noise cancellation, transparency mode, ear detection and the sound quality offered by its close competitors. However these cheaper niche brands often use sales. So one day the price can be really close to a competitor and another day the difference could be more pronounced. So it kind of comes down to what's on sale at a given time and if you want to wait or not. Certainly these at full price compared to the Comfort Buds on offer does make them look a, a bit expensive. But then again if you really value the battery life and Bluetooth 5.2 these start to look like a no brainer. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.